Hello and welcome back to the channel How We Move the Decimal. In this video I am photographing books that I got from the massive estate sale book haul. I am also apparently photographing my cat's butt. This is my cat Dylan. He is a tuxedo and he is very much attached to me at all times. I am his person. A lot of the books were not in great great shape and the ones that were in great shape weren't worth a lot. I just went through and was photographing some books this weekend and the mass produced books that were in really great shape basically worth nothing but they would sell at a yard sale so if in the end i end up spending one to five cents per book i will just throw them in a yard sale the ones that either i need to lot up or they need to just go <laughs> This book is listed and I also have another coloring book listed. I don't know where the coloring books came from in the lot. Like I said, at the very, very, very beginning, both my husband, myself, and my 14 year old were there and we were moving books all simultaneously. So it could have been in a box that they took, but it wasn't in my box. My boxes, I was upstairs mainly in the kitchen. So my boxes were the cookbooks where my husband and son basically went all over the house because when we said we would buy every book in the house for $80, they meant every book. We went through all of the rooms, bedrooms, downstairs in the basement, in the garage, in the kitchen, in the living room, in the dining room. We found books everywhere. There were books in bottoms of boxes, books on shelves, books behind tubs. I want to say it took us over two hours to find all the books and we filled my entire minivan up with them. My son had to carry a box of books on his lap and I had to carry a box of books on my lap on the way home. So there is a bunch of books and we haven't even gone through a quarter of them. So I'm estimating I paid less than five cents per book. I can sell them fairly cheaply because my cost of goods is extremely low. I am using them as store filler also. I know these are long game. I know I'm not going to get rich selling books. There's, I want to say she's Australian lady on YouTube that just has warehouses full of books and she's very successful. I'm not her. And a lot of her books are essentially new or in like amazing immaculate shape. The cookbooks I did pull, they're used, they're well-loved, which is great. That means this lady, and I'm going to assume it was the lady that used them, she used all of them. She had plenty of time to cook. I don't, I don't even think I've used, well, I use one cookbook every year at Christmas, and that is a very specific cookbook put out by my grandmother's old job, and they like gathered up people's things uh also to put into context my grandmother died many many years ago she died uh i want to say 11 years ago she only met one of my children very briefly and my two youngest never had a chance to meet her however every christmas they eat her christmas cookies because that was the recipe she put in the recipe book and I'm sure I've told this story before in a one of these videos because I'm apparently a record on repeat, but I like the personal cookbooks for that. Now, when we got married, we got the the standard, here's your newlywed present, because apparently every new newlyweds needs a cookbook. We got the Better Homes and Gardens, you know, red and white checkered cookbook. I don't think I've ever even opened it, but I have used my grandma's work cookbook to make her cookies. I've also made peanut butter cookies out of there too. She did not make that recipe, but she did use that recipe because she used that cookbook. It's actually her cookbook. So after she died, I got that cookbook from her. When people wanted stuff from her estate, they were all going for like jewelry and the expensive things. And I'm like, I want the cookbook. Give me the cookbook. And it was one of, she had, a, you know, one of many cookbooks, but it was the only one that had like bookmarks. And the bookmarks were like much like this lady's bookmarks. They were parts of magazines, 
There were coupons, newspapers, whatever was handy, a napkin were used as coupons. So I get, I'm getting kind of sentimental when I'm photographing these. I'm having to flip through all of them because I'm finding things. Granted, I only found $1 bill, but people do put money in books. So that's also my advice. If you buy an estate worth of books, flip through the books. Ironically, I just photographed a Weight Watchers book. So this lady that had all these cookbooks, all these recipes, she obviously used them. They're yellowed. There are, you know, grease splatters on pages. Was also trying to do Weight Watchers, but don't fret people. She only used the first week. So that was both hilarious and kind of sad at the same time. The, but I, you know, I digress. A grand majority of the books we pulled out were like individualized cookbooks. We have, well, and ironically, we have another cookbook here that my husband's great grandmother gave us. And it was like, right when we got married to was like quick meals for two. Uh, and there's like a whole like section on how to use this new invention called a microwave. I'm also having to fix the camera here because my cat knocked it over. Love him. So I just thought that was funny too. Like here's this new, new fangled invention called a microwave. And this is how you use it. The, and that was well used. And she said that her and her husband had used it because they, uh, after the kids left, all the kids left, and they became empty nesters that her and her husband used it a lot. So we have that cookbook, we have my grandmother's cookbook, and we have the original Better Homes and Gardens red and white checkered cookbook, because everybody, when they get married, gets that cookbook. It's like a standard thing. Here you go. Here's your cookbook. Congratulations. We've only come across one of them so far in the slot, but I think there's more than one. I think there's different iterations of it, different types of it. The, you know, there's many editions, many sizes, bound, not bound, binder clipped, not binder clipped, all of that. So I'm kind of interested to see how many iterations I do find, how many versions of it. This book is actually listed and selling for one of the higher cookbooks. I have it listed for $30. It has sold for much higher than that, but mine has been listed for about two months and hasn't budged. Again, books, especially cookbooks, are long tail. I do expect around September cookbook sales to pick up because people will be looking th for things for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And sorry for any non-Christian holiday people, but those are big times that we use recipes or wish we had a recipe or, you know, maybe my grandmother's cookbook, if it got like damaged beyond repair, I might go on eBay and look for that cookbook. Granted, again, it's such a niche market. I have cookbooks that are very individualized, you know, United Methodist Women of Utah. I'm just making that up. But I have United Methodist Women of Utah. The chance of somebody wanting that particular cookbook very, very slim and wanting to go on eBay to buy that particular cookbook. Again, very, very slim. I acknowledge this. This is long tail. My husband had a really good idea for a YouTube channel based on like finding old cookbooks because we were laughing at some of the recipes in these, like um, four cups of lard. One of the recipes called for four cups of lard. Crisco technically could be used for this, but the chances are, you know, we're not going to go to the butcher and say, hey, I need a gallon of lard. But that was used readily back then. I have just recently gone into canning, which is fun, but I'm not canning anything crazy. I'm canning like pickles and soup broth. So that's, you know, not insane but also a lost art. So I might, if I went to a thrift store and saw a canning book, I might pick up a canning book. So things that aren't as modern, maybe I would be looking for that. If I was a homesteader, I guess I'd be looking for stuff. The, one of the books was like how to tell if food is bad, which was obviously it was pre expiration dates on food cookbook, which to me is crazy. 
how to tell if your eggs are bad because, you know, when a chicken lays an egg in your backyard, they do not stamp it with an expiration date. So how to tell the lay, you know, when does the egg your chicken laid go bad? How to make homemade butter, how to make homemade buttermilk, which it's basically the same process, different outcomes. You get butter and buttermilk in the same time. How to do all of that. How to do it with a hand mixer. I've done it before, but I have a huge KitchenAid and that's kind of set it and forget it. But you have to be careful to make butter and not whipped cream because I've also done that with my KitchenAid on accident. But I do see the appeal of older cookbooks with crazy recipes that we, you know, the ingredients are hard to find or we have shortcuts. Um, we can buy self-rising flour now, quick yeast, stuff like that would be shortcuts. I know sourdough is a thing, but I'm never going to get into sourdough. This book, I went back and forth on whether to list it or put it as a junk journal book on eBay. It's listed because the pages are good. The cover is junk, but the actual pages are good. You can't tell at all because I had a cat butt, so I had to cut him out. He sat there for seven and a half minutes. So I was listing books. You missed it. I didn't realize he was completely covering the camera, but I had to cut out seven and a half minutes of this video because of a cat butt. This also cookbooks and railroad books. So the husband died before the wife did, and this was the estate of just the wife. I'm assuming the cookbooks are hers. They have her name written in every page, like at the front page of every cookbook. There was also a lot of railroad books. So I'm wondering if the husband and I, this is extremely sexist of me. I'm sorry. I'm wondering if the husband worked in the railroad. There were railroad like history books. There were like this that had union papers in it for working on the railroad, like the, they'd have the union meeting and then whatever the negotiations and stuff were, they would publish in these books and give them to the union members so they know what like the negotiations were and what their rights and what powers they have. There were several of these. There were several like health health insurance guides for the railroad. And this, this specifically is North Fol Norfolk Southern. This is one of the major railroads, if not the major railroad in our area that employs people. This family was local. So I'm not surprised. It is a large employer. My dad worked for the railroad for a while when I was little. So it's not uncommon for people to have family members in the railroad around here because it is such a major employer. The... But we are a very, very blue collar town. So there are a lot of factories and stuff. So I found that, I'm like, I found that interesting. I want to say this was from like 1973 or 1976 or something like that. And this was from the seventies. And a lot of the railroad books were from the seventies. I didn't find that many that went into the eighties. So it makes me wonder how, like, when did he die? Like how long has he been dead? We found all of the railroad books in the garage. Again, stereotypical. And I did not find them. My son found all of the railroad books. We're like, we, and this was, we thought that we were done. Like, okay, we've been in all the rooms. I'm pretty sure we're done. Why don't, you know, why don't you go and do a quick sweep of the garage while your dad and I cash out and while we make sure everything fits in the van. And he came back with like six or seven railroad books. But he's like, these were in the garage. I would have never looked for books in the garage, but there were books in the garage. There were books everywhere. The only place there were not books, and I'm very happy about that because I'm not sure I would pick those books up, was the bathroom. Otherwise, every single other room had books. The kitchen was just a scavenger hunt, and I was so lucky. This was the third day. It was right before they were closing. There were so many nice strangers, so many nice people that were helping me, well, helping all three of us go through the house and find books. So like when I was in the kitchen, I was packing up a box. I would have people come and drop books off at the box or they'd be like, hey, I just found a handful of books over here. Um, you need to come get them. 
they were putting books in boxes for us. They weren't like packing up, but if they found a book, they'd drop it in one of our boxes, which was incredibly nice. My cat hit the camera again, so you're getting just the very top of the book because he's a jerk. But um, thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe and have a productive day.